So next on the Velo set, I uh, removed the pistons. I think I've mentioned one of the previous owners of the bike obviously didn't have a welder because none of the bodywork's been welded up. Um, I have started stripping the fuel tank and the front guard, getting the paint off those. But it turns out a previous owner must have had a welder because one of the pistons is actually welded up. You can sort of see it in there. Um, so, there's a bit of wear there. Uh, the worst thing with this piston is this little end bush. That's, that's really bad. Um, of course, ideally there should be no play in that at all. It should just rotate. So, definitely needs little end bushes. Um, I need to figure out how to get further into this now. So this, this must come off, this cover. I guess I need to take that off. I've removed the nuts here. I don't know if these thread into this or thread all the way through. Um, but I'm guessing I need to take that off and remove all of this sort of points gear. And then hopefully I can get that cover off. I think that gets you to the flywheel. Um, I need to take the sump off. And I'm not sure what these hold. I haven't figured out how you get this piece off. Uh, I'm guessing you need to remove the whole clutch assembly and then this will come loose. And I also need to remove this bracket, which has been bent quite badly. So, still lots of bits and pieces to try and take apart here. Oh, and I've been soaking the head, or I've put penetrant around it. I may need to soak it in something to try and get that head not look, knocked loose. So, uh, the other thing I can try now, let's see... It's going to be a bit hard to see, the light's not very good. But there are those two grooves. Where is it? No, it's a bit hard to see. But uh, yeah, I would say that's what caused those grooves because it's the exact same diameter as the, as the gudgeon pin. So, that's where the Velocet is at. So you have the engine further stripped down. Um, took off the, the uh, stator plate from here. This is the flywheel under here. It's brass and it's got magnets inside it. And I measured the coils. Uh, these seem okay. Um, so that's good, that should clean up okay. I removed the clutch assembly. I haven't taken that apart any further. Um, I think you need to use like a valve spring compressor or a, uh, they call it a hand press, maybe a, a clamp or something. And I think what you do is you hold this down and release these, these nuts and that'll release the clutch mechanism. The, Um, again, the gaskets were all covered in goop, so they all just ripped apart as I tried to get it apart. So it's all been kind of glued together, which is a bit annoying, really. Um, but I'm not going to reuse any of these gaskets anyway. And you can see how the gaskets have been homemade. Goop everywhere. Um, yeah, not very clean inside this engine. So this is the starter mechanism and the handbook does talk about replacing these so I wonder if that is a replacement part um, but it kind of it sort of ratchets hard to do with one hand Uh, 
that all seems in okay condition down carefully um, the clutch basket I can swap this over apparently for the later steel kind rather than the aluminium ones and I removed all the oil piping and the oil pump uh, that's that there probably want to replace that screen it's it's almost worn through in a few places and you wouldn't really want little bits of wire floating around in there and this is all the oil piping which is absolutely filthy really really disgusting so it'll be interesting to see if these actually flow if they're, if they're not blocked and I'm not sure how much further I'll go with this or need to go with this so I need to start trying to figure out how worn it is um, and I don't know if you can do that without actually taking the crank out but I have seen there is some back and forth in there um, I was able to get a feeler gauge down in between the crank and that thrust bearing and it was a seventh hour gauge I think would go in uh, and an eight wouldn't um, I don't know how you tell how much wear is okay on the conrods so there's a little bit of sort of wiggle on them this one but I can't feel any in and out sort of movement so going pushing it backwards and forwards there doesn't seem to be any play there um, the little ends are shot of course so they would need replacing uh, as you can see the whole thing is filthy like really really grimy so it's definitely going to need a good clean out um, I'll probably soak it in some degreaser or something like that I think that housing looks like it would come off but I'm guessing to get to that that's when you need to start undoing the flywheel so I'm probably going to leave it at that for now I'm going to go back to working on the car uh, and then I can read up about what to do next with this read through the forums there's all sorts of information on the forums there's all sorts of old um, club magazines which are really useful so I'm sure there'll be some technical information somewhere and there seem to be plenty of people I can ask as well again here's some of this homemade gasket um, that's been glued in everywhere so all of that will need cleaning up uh, yeah, I think that's it for now on this one. And I got the flywheel nut off and there's kind of the spacer under it and then there is a key slot with no key um, and the spacer has no key slot in it so I'm not quite sure how that works. Uh, but um, yeah, this is, this is where I now need to go and research and find out what exactly is happening here. I'm not sure how you get the, I think what happens is once you get the flywheel off, you can pull out the whole crank assembly. Um, so you can see there are these sort of windows here. I think this cover will come off and then what you do is you line up the connecting rods so they'll poke out through this and I think the whole thing just comes out backwards uh, I need to also figure out what happens on the front end here I'm guessing you remove this plate I might have to remove that which is the end of the crank um, I guessing that gear comes off and then inside there must be the camshaft so a little bit further to go. Poor Riley's not getting any love today. But I went a little bit further with this uh, and it took me ages. So the first problem was I couldn't get the locking ring off for the, um, the end of the crankshaft. Uh, it's a special, a special sort of nut thing. Um, in the end, it was a bit knackered as well. In the end, what I ended up doing was welding another nut to the top of it. So I was able to uh, then use an impact driver to get that to come off. So 
hopefully I can get a new one of those or else I should be able to make something if I really have to. Uh, then the next problem was getting the pinion gear off. Uh, that was this one. That is a very tight push fit on there. I don't think it's probably ever come off. So it took lots of penetrating oil and a little bit of heat uh, in order to get that off. And I had to modify a an old puller I had to thin out the legs to get it to go underneath them because there was oh, probably a sixteenth, um, less than three mil clearance or, or gap underneath there to be able to get that off. And there's a ring there, you can see it's quite corroded and it's sort of stuck on. Uh, but then I was able to pull out the camshaft and as soon as I pulled out the camshaft I realized that was a mistake because I didn't know what the timing was but luckily I've cleaned these gears up and there is actually timing marks on them which is good so this is the camshaft uh, there's a bit of I don't think that's pitting I think that's more staining it's hard to tell I'm going to give it a clean up with a with a gentle um, like a nylon brush thing something that's not going to damage the actual steel but uh, hopefully that's okay and I think that's probably where I'm going to stop dismantling this as, as far as I can tell I looked in the manuals um, as long as there is no in and out play those big ends should be okay. It does say don't confuse that with other play. So there's nothing there that I can feel. So I suspect the big end is okay. And there doesn't seem to be any play in the in the bearings. Um, because I think the problem is once you start trying to go a bit further than this, it, it starts getting really tricky trying to get everything apart and making sure that the flywheel is still timed with the for the electrics and all that kind of thing so maybe this is as far as i'll go um apparently it's not too bad replacing the um the little end bushes i think i can do that as it is the whole thing needs a good clean out though it's covered in sludge so maybe that's what i'll do next i'll mix up some degreaser and leave it soaking in that overnight um and see if the camshaft cleans up you can see all the sludge here this is in the cover uh, there's little dowel pins that hold everything in so yeah it, it depends how far you want to go with the engine rebuild i guess and for a bike that isn't going to get used a lot probably just around the garden i don't know if i have to strip the whole thing down just try and get it running again i suppose um but I don't think it's too bad, the, the bottom end. I cleaned up the cam with a, a scotch pad. Uh, there is pitting on it, so there is rust damage. Well, I'm guessing it's from rust, I'm not sure. I'm guessing new cams aren't available, so maybe I just have to, to use it. I'm not sure. I should probably check. There's a little hole there. Uh, I don't know if there's an oil passage through that or something. That little hole is an oil passage. It uh, leads through to that, that hole up at the gear end as well. I just sprayed some carb cleaner through it just to make sure it was clean. I decided to try to properly measure the end float. Uh, and this was the, the way I came up with. It's just sitting on the, the um, milling table and with a little lever, a screwdriver, I can lift the, the crank just carefully and to see what the end float is. It's between seven and eight thou, which is kind of what I measured with the feeler gauge. Uh, that's 
within spec. I think the spec was zero to th uh, three to eight thou. So it would be fairly easy to fix, I think. I think you can just renew the thrust washers in here. There's a thrust washer either side from what I can determine. But to get the crank out, I need to remove the flywheel and you need a special puller. And you also need to remove this gear down here, which I think should be easy enough. Although getting the first gear off was a real struggle. That was quite corroded inside there. Um, I think I could actually get a puller on that now and be able to pull that off. Because uh, I'm not sure how this housing comes off. I'm pretty sure you do have to get the, the flywheel off to be able to dismantle it any further. Uh, but I think that's all I'm going to do on this at the moment. I'm still trying to read through all the information and talk to people about it. Um, I do have one of the heads in the ultrasonic, so I'm going to clean those up. I'll probably put them through a number of cycles, get them all degreased, get them cleaned up, and then take the valves and things out and have a look at those. Um, all the water stubs would need replacing on these. Those are available. Um, or you can make them up, machine them up from stainless steel. Uh, the big ends, as far as I can tell, measuring them, this, it's hard to know if these are the plain ones or the roll ones. I think these are all plain bushes in this engine. Um, again, I'd have to pull it all apart to really know. But these measured, um, I think it was 11.30 seconds, which makes it the second style of plain Mark II bushes uh, or big end bearings. It all gets a bit confusing because they, they seem to change the parts and things around. And of course, you're never quite sure what you've got in your particular engine because you don't know if it's original or not. So unless you pull it apart, you can't really tell. Um, the other thing I'm wondering is, were these painted originally? I think the barrels were, but I'm not sure the bodies were. So I may end up stripping the paint off that as well, either that or repainting it. So the Vela set, uh, the body over there, I still haven't really done anything on it. I'm waiting to see if it's worth doing, if the engine is going to be able to be rebuilt. Um, I have done little bits and pieces. I cleaned up the fuel tank. It needs priming and painting on the outside. Started stripping the paint off the front guard. And I've been cleaning up the engine, the engine itself. Uh, I got all the paint off it. Um, lack of thinner took most of that off. I did manage to get this pinion gear off. Um, I used, had to buy this style of puller. Uh, that was very tight and um, I did manage to get it off with a bit of heat and lots of penetrating fluid and lots of trying. And um, the thrust washer under there, you could see where it had been rubbing but uh, or wearing, but there was no step in it. So now that this is all clean, I've remeasured the end float. It's about eight thou on the crank, which is right on the upper limit. Um, the problem is to fix that, um, one, you have to get the flywheel off. So I would need a flywheel puller. Then you can get this housing off. And then if you take out the pinion gear, you can get the crankshaft out. And even then, the difficulty is the way this, this big end works is there's a bush inside there. And the thrust faces are, you can sort of see one of them there. Uh, you can see the, the, um, the bronze bush, and then there's a hardened steel thrust washer. That's one of them. The other one is under that gear. And they're sort of sandwiched um, between what's called a journal inside there. So, even with this off, um, if the thrust washer had a step worn on it, you can replace it. But because mine didn't, I measured it. I actually used the micrometer to measure it, and I couldn't measure anywhere. You could see where it had been rubbing, but it hadn't worn a step into it. So, I've decided to leave all of that alone. 
um, because you start getting into there you have to then pull off that journal um, you have to start making stepped thrust washers and you need the right hardened material it, it all sounds like it gets very difficult very quickly so given that this is on the upper end of the limit I'm going to just leave it and then I don't have to worry about taking any of this apart um, I'm a bit worried that there is some play in the big ends but it's really hard to tell the difference so there is a little bit of play side to side a little bit of wiggle on them um, and when it was all clean I did it did feel like there was some in and out but like I say it's it's hard to tell really you need the pistons in there I think so that you know they're going completely straight up and down the bore to be able to measure that um, that big end wear and that was that was when it was all clean I'd, I've cleaned out um, I've used degreaser and brake cleaner all through the passages and then I checked that you can actually pump oil through these just with my oil can and you definitely can oils coming out everywhere um, and it's amazing how much off the slop the oil takes up the, it's the side to side so again I think I'm going to leave that because to replace these means of course taking all the crank out and all of that but then taking the crank apart and it's all sort of pressed together uh, it becomes a really massive job so I have to consider what what do I want this engine and this bike to do um, I don't actually have a bike license and I don't really have any intention of riding it on the road um, except maybe nautily around just around here around the neighborhood so I think my plan is just to get something together that runs reasonably well um, if it uses a bit of oil because it's a little bit worn I think that'll be fine uh, it's just trying to figure out what's acceptable but um, you know it'd be good to, it'd be nice if I could make it perfect but I don't think it's worth it not for me anyway um, but if I can get a running fairly decent engine I'm just gonna putter around the garden uh, so I think I'm gonna have to go with what I've got of course the other thing is you can always look out for another engine and rebuild that so instead of getting held up on trying to make this perfect I'd rather just make something go and then I can build the rest of the bike around it and always come back to it later so that's the plan for now um, the biggest problem of course is going to be the cylinder the cylinders um, they will need doing so it's just going to be a matter of slowly going through it I'm still a bit confused exactly what engine I've got um, if it's a mark 2 or a mark 3 it seems to be all plain bushes which apparently the later mark 2 ones were so um, yeah it's a bit tricky and I think it's an AC4 um, electrical system on it so that's what this seems to say AC4 it's got a number one one three one three two is that AC4 AC something yep four uh, it almost looks like it was a three and then it was a four so I don't actually know what's going on there then. There is another little plate somewhere. I really need to start organizing some of these bits. Um, I do need to look at the clutch, of course. So this Miller AC4. Yeah, for the generator. So I think it's a late Mark II, early Mark III engine. Um, of course I do have the plate that was on the bike but how do you know for certain that was the that goes with this engine so it's better to go by what parts you've actually got uh, so that's where that's at at the moment uh, I think when, when I get sick of cleaning up engine parts I'll start just cleaning up other little bits and pieces things like the fuel tank so the inside of the fuel tanks done um, really I just need to prime and paint it none of that seen so it doesn't have to be perfect um, I can start looking at the radiator 
I can start figuring out fixing the body. Um, you can see it's starting to surface rust already where I've been touching it. That's fine, it'll all have to be cleaned back before it's painted anyway. And the wheels have been sitting in the Evaporust for over a week now. I should probably actually get them out of there. Um, and I've just been rotating them around and letting them soak. Uh, which has pretty much taken care of all the rust on those. So the paint on this one is pretty gungy. Uh, again, these will just need wire brushing and a coat of paint. And the paint I'll probably use is what I used on my Austin 7 which is the Wattle Killrust Gloss Black. Um, it takes ages to dry, but once it dries, it's actually pretty good and it's actually fuel proof. So this is a test piece I did. Um, I think it's fuel proof, petrol proof. And it seems to hold up reasonably well. So uh, that's where that is at. Uh, now I'm actually going to work on the Riley some more. So back onto the Valisette. Haven't done anything on the engine or anything new, just cleaned it up. I did remove the steel clutch, uh, whoa, what would you call this, drum, outer housing, something like that. Um, pulled this off the spare gearbox that I have. That apparently can just directly replace this aluminium one, which is pretty battered up. So I'm going to clean up the gearbox at some point. But at the moment, I'm looking at the clutch and the clutch assembly. And I have compressed the clutch in my little bench press and undone the bolts. And now I'm going to release the tension on this and that should get the clutch off, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Let's see what happens. There we go. It hasn't gone completely sprawling and had bits flying off everywhere, so that must be a good sign. Uh, and then I'm not actually sure how this comes apart. Oops. The, uh, the Valisette uses a lot of these little washers. Uh, I guess you'd call them shake-proof washers. So hopefully I can get more of them. These are the clutch bolts. So, uh, I'm not sure how you tell if this is good or not. It's one of those things where if, if the parts are easily available, you might as well just replace them. I don't think they'll be expensive. We'll keep those in order though. Um, I wonder if I should have marked that to know which way round it went. Uh, it might be a little bit late now. Uh, I can probably stop this and actually um, check my film before I go and move any of this around. Uh, I'm not sure if it's important or not, but I might as well do it now, just in case it is. I did mark this so I know which way it goes. And Okay, that's all there is to it. So these are all the clutch springs, and I think these are little cups that they fit into. They all seem okay. And
need to look in the book and see what the story is behind here. That seems a bit wobbly. Oh, there's definitely movement there. Should there be? Uh, again, I need to go look in the book and see what the story is there. Or is that, is that where in the bearing? Is that a bearing? <laughs> Bit hard to tell with one hand, but there's definitely play in there. Probably see it. So, again, I need to go and look and find out what's what inside there. And we'll put that back for now. So I don't lose all my springs. There's another washer. Yeah, this is why I need to get new washers because some of these are broken. Well, which always makes you wonder where the little bits have gone. So this is the um, starter mechanism, the starter port. So there's a little bit of a a little bit of a divot worn in that. Um, I can probably, if that's enough to worry about, I have got some TIG hard facing uh, rod. Um, I can't remember what the stuff is called, but it's, it's hardened type stuff, so it's specifically for building up things like that if I need to. Uh, and I just want to get all the paint off this. The, the gear there, it looks it's a bit strange. Uh, there's a bit of a sort of edge on it. I'm not sure what that's supposed to look like. So again, uh, time to do a bit of research and look in the parts box and look at pictures of these things and see see what they're meant to look like but that's basically the clutch there's not a lot to it so three friction plates uh, yeah that's probably it for today that I can do on this so another update on the Valisette I can't remember what the last thing I talked about on this was uh, I think I'd mentioned cleaning up the the casing and pulling apart the clutch uh, on the body started stripping the paint on one of the mud guards and i think i've decided how i'm going to fix this i'm going to carefully trim the inner piece slightly back um, probably half an inch back and then that'll let me weld a new piece to fill in the gap uh, which is actually from slightly thicker gauge steel uh, and I'll be able to butt weld to the outer panel and then metal finish that so that's all nice and then I will probably drill through this and just sort of plug weld, spot weld it to that inner piece. Um, I will need to look at what's missing here. I think there's a piece that sort of comes up here. There's a cutout here anyway for the uh, the tubes that go to the rear axle so until I've got all of that kind of assembled again it's going to be hard to know what needs to go in there and um, it means kind of having to re reassemble all the mechanical stuff so I need to get back onto this it's getting surface rust on it already but that's okay that's easy to clean off um, I've kind of been holding off because I've been trying to decide what I was going to do with the engine but I've decided to restore all of this anyway. Put the engine that I've got back together as best I can. I will need new um, pistons and have the barrels bored out. But I think the rest of it is good enough that it'll be a working engine as long as I can figure out the electrical and that sort of stuff. And I can at least get it as a running bike again. 
So I'll do as good a job as I can on repairing all the metalwork on this. Um, I'm going to keep going ahead with cleaning up bits and pieces. So to that end, I have been soaking the rims in evaporust for several weeks, rotating them around. It's got all the rust out of the outer part of it. The inner part was actually not too bad. Um, these still need a really good clean, sort of get all the loose paint off um, and then I can, I can repaint them. All the spokes actually seem fine, the tension seems good. Um, none of them are broken or bent. The rims are actually in pretty good condition once I go through and wire brush these and then I'll give them a coat of um, Kill Rust Black enamel paint which is what I used on my Austin 7 and I also used it to touch up the wheels on the Riley. Um, it's just really good anti-rust black paint. It takes forever to dry, but once it dries it's good and it's actually fuel proof as well, or reasonably fuel proof. Um, or it doesn't at least just wipe straight off like, like a lacquer would. So in order to finish con uh, continue cleaning up the wheels, I've had to remove the hubs and the bearings. And now this was a bit of a mission. Um, what you do is, some of the parts, you pop off the little dust cover, that's just sort of a press fit, and underneath there is this ring that sits on like that, and that screws into the hub, it's threaded. So that screws in there, that's what re retains everything. And this, you can see, has four little cutouts in it, and there's a special tool that you use to get these undone. Of course, I don't have the special tools, so my first attempt at making one was this, uh, with two pins, but the, the hubs were just on there, or those locking rings were so tight, it would just bend this. So that didn't work. So I made a new, I don't really want to call it a tool, because it's so crude, um, but I'd machined up a piece of steel and then milled it down so it had the four little prongs. It actually moved when I was milling it. Um, which is why I never milled it all the way down but it, it, I, because it came out of the mill because it had moved I took it out anyway and gave it a try and uh, it actually fitted okay so I went with what I had I just welded a big nut on the end this is actually an old Austin 7 rear half shaft nut um, very crudely welded on the inside because I can't see what I'm doing inside there so you just sort of point the welder and squirt uh, and that was enough to hold it on there, but that meant I was able to get that to fit it should fit in there uh, And then because there's a big nut on there I was able to use my impact driver to, to, to pull that loose. I find the impact drivers just work brilliantly for anything like that these days um, It seems like there's far less chance of damaging things um, These have already been apart before because they're already pretty mangled but uh, I'll clean these up as best I can. Um, this, it, they were so tight, it's even mangled this a little bit. But I was able to straighten it, and I should be able to use that once again, or twice more, to get these done up once they're all finished. So once you get that off, there is a sort of metal um, dust shield thing. There's actually one of those either side. And then in the middle of it, there is the shaft. And what you do is you drift out this shaft. So I've got a piece of brass bar that's just the right diameter to sit on that. And you knock that out. And this whole assembly um, basically slides out of here, comes out this way. So the bearings, I've, they were full of old grease. I've scraped out as much of the grease as I can. I've been using parts cleaner and degreaser uh, on top of my other new parts or new old parts um, so I've cleaned these up as much as I can the first one I'm, I'm keeping them in pairs so I know which is the front and the back and I don't want to mix up the pieces but the front hub has been in the ultrasonic cleaner uh, this piece basically I don't want to take this apart any further I don't think I need to uh, the bearings seem fine, there was just so much grease in there, um, there's no, no play in them, uh, they seem to rotate fine, so 
I will just re-grease them uh, with modern grease and put them back together once the wheels are painted. So as I say, the first lot's been through the um, ultrasonic cleaner once. I'll put it through again and pull those out and re-grease them and they should be good to go back in once the wheels are ready. So that is some progress. Uh, what else? Go past the Riley. Uh, the fuel tank, I've cleaned up the outside of it and I etch primed it. Um, there was something still left on the outside of it which has reacted with the etch primer a little bit so I may need to scuff those areas up and redo them um, and then I'll give those a coat of that same black paint that black enamel and the radiator I've cleaned that up I've flushed it out with water numerous times the inside of it is actually reasonably clean um, I may put something in there to help get the any corrosion out um, although in a way that's easier to do when it's on an engine and you can actually run it and put radiator flush through it But I went through and I straightened as many of the fins as I could. It's been dinged here um, These fins are copper so very very delicate very easy to bend and What I found worked really well for straightening them was using Where are they? Um, two offcuts of aluminium and I could sort of slot these in between the the fins like that and use the two of them and sort of pinch them together um, and that would straighten these out reasonably well but uh, the radiator seems good so that'll just get I'll scuff all of that up and that'll get a, another coat of black paint um, I did try this was worse it was quite dented in here I did knock that out as much as I dared. I don't want to damage it, so I think that'll be good enough. Um, it's just the corner that's damaged. I don't think there are any leaks in it. Uh, I should plug it up and actually see. Um, maybe do, maybe if I put corks in everything, I can just put you know a couple of PSI of air through it and see if it leaks anywhere. Um, I don't believe these are pressurized. No, they're not pressurized, so it should be fine if it holds water. Uh, I think the ultrasonic cleaner has finished. So that's where I'm at with this little bike. Uh, there's all sorts of other bits and pieces to clean up that shouldn't be too hard. Things like the rear shocks. Um, I think these are just kind of grease-filled tubes effectively, but all of these should clean up really nicely. Uh, the frame, maybe I'll take that to my, I'll see how I do with wire brushing it, but maybe I'll take that to the, the sandblasting chap. And uh, yeah, I'm sort of trying to clean up as much as I can before I actually start spending money on it. So obviously I'm going to new, need new rims and tires. Um, I think they're about $150 each, something like that. Um, but I'll get the rims done first and I want to leave the paint to dry for a few months at least to, to really make sure the paint is hardened before I actually try putting any tyres on them. Um, the gearbox, I need to start stripping this down. Or as much as I think I need to go, I don't, I don't think it really needs to go too far, it looks okay. Um, and then yeah, the sort out what to do with the barrels uh, that's going to be interesting um, before you machine them you need to have the pistons and rings you're going to fit in them so they can machine them to fit but, uh, yeah i think i'll put the other bearing through the ultrasonic again the timer on it is only for 30 minutes and then i usually stop it and let it let it rest a bit cool down for 10 minutes and then i start it up again This is just the front hub parts after I've cleaned them up. Um, just through the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, they come out with sort of a black kind of, it's almost like dust on them, um, which may just be a sign that I need to change the fluid in that cleaner. But I then rinse them off just in some hot soapy water. Uh, is a good time to make a cup of tea as well but 
hot soapy water and I usually just use a, um, a red scotch bright and that just cleans them up and then I just coat them in WD-40 just so they don't surface rust until I'm ready to repack those with grease um, and they run fine. Um, I also, after the ultrasonic, I do squirt them down with the, the parts cleaner, brake cleaner, just to make sure there are no little bits of grit or anything in them. And uh, no, they'll, they'll run fine once they're repacked with grease. I do need to degrease the inside of the hubs as well. Um, I really want to water blast these, but my, I think my water blaster is starting to fail. I've fixed it three or four times. Uh, it's probably time I got a new one, a decent pressure washer. But um, the second lot's in there now. I'll let those finish, clean them up, and um, they should be good to put back together once I've painted the wheels.